Hello everybody and welcome back to Make Share Daily. And this whole week we're doing Halloween. So all the builds we're doing this week are Halloween based. And this is a tutorial on how to build a Lego jack-o-lantern. So let's get into it. But before we get into it, let's look at some of the details of this Lego jack-o-lantern. Some that are different than what you probably see on Pinterest or on other Lego forums. So this particular jack-o-lantern has a little more depth to it, a little more three-dimensionalness to the build itself, which gives it a lot more character. And it has this little crooked nose on it, and it has this smile that kind of goes up on the side, you know what I mean? A little, uh, which gives it a little cuteness factor to the Lego itself. It's around... It is a round shape like most of the other jack o lanterns that you've seen, but because it's not 100% symmetrical, it gives that overall feel that it, a little more realism. Anything that's very symmetrical within Lego gives a anti-realistic feel to it. Now, jack o lanterns aren't real and Legos aren't real, but I think you get what I'm talking about. The depth of the piece and not just being 2D is really what makes it stand out from other Lego builds that I've seen for jack-o-lanterns. Adding depth to Legos is probably the number one tip to any master builder to a beginner builder is adding a depth layer adds so much to the build itself and it gives a lot more talking points and a lot more points of interest on the build and it creates a better build itself. So that's what I've done is I've created more depth to the jack-o-lanterns that I've seen on Pinterest and other forums. So the eyes are sunken back and the nose comes forward to add more depth to the build itself. That it's not 100% symmetrical, in my mind, adds a lot of value. If you agree or disagree, leave a comment down below. If you were building a spaceship, you would want 100% symmetrical. But something that is supposed to be organic, like a pumpkin or a jack-o-lantern, you want to give it a little bit of unsymmetricalness to give it some character, to give it some facets to actually look at. So now let's get into the actual build itself and the tutorial of how to build this jack-o-lantern. So we're going to start off very simply. It's a 2x3 brick and a 2x2 brick. So very simply, there you go. That's the starting point. The next level is also very simple. It's a 2x3 and a 2x4 brick. We're going to overlap the gaps so that the gaps don't line up and it gives a little more grip to the bricks to stick to each other, which is good because it's going to get a little teeter-tottery with this build later on. The next level is like this. It's a 2x2 two two orange and a 2x2 two two orange on both sides and in the middle is 2x5s. I put a 2x3 and a 2x2. Two two. Now the 2x2 two two orange pieces go on on the sides and stick out a little. The black pieces actually overlap the gap down here and stick out a little on the back. Now we need that for the next layers to build upon. So I wouldn't suggest that you use um, thinner plates or thinner bricks here, like a one by four and a one by one. I suggest that you use the two by five uh, area that we're looking for. And right here is the reason why. This is a two by four. This is also a two by four that's staggered front and back. And I'll, see, I'll show you why. This is a one by two black and a two by two orange. So let's put the 2x2 two two orange directly on top of the other one. Let's put the 2x4 orange here. And notice the face of the build so far is flat. Okay, It's stepped back for the teeth, but the front is flat. This is where the nose comes in. So this actually overhangs by two bricks. Let's see if I can show you that. So it overhangs by two bricks. That's why it needs to be a 2x4 brick. Then the one by two is set back on top of the other black pieces. 
And you can see the start of the nose and how it sticks out and sticks out in the back too. But don't, don't worry about the back. We're going to cover that up. So this next level is more like the cheek side. It's the gap between the mouth and the eyes. So you need a layer in between so that there's a distinction between where the eyes are and where the mouth starts. So on this side, it's a two by four, or in our case, two two by twos. On here, on this side, it's a two by four. And that's the, and then you can see the crook of the nose, right? So you don't want to have the same dimension on the bottom of the nose as the top of the nose. So you want it to kind of slope up, but in our case, it kind of crooks to the side, but that's okay because there's a crooked mouth too, right? So the next layer is a little tricky as well. We have some set back and some set forward. So let's add the two two by twos on the side first, then a two by one black piece on both sides. That's gonna make the eyes. And to keep the nose going, now this is a choice. You can either keep the nose going a little higher and in between the eyes, which is my preferred, or to get a smaller nose, you could set it back one. But I don't like that. I like the bigger nose. It gives more character to the jack -lane. So there you go, there's that one. So here's the next level. So this is a two by three going over the eyes, two by two, and another two by two. Now you could use a two by four if that's what you have. So there you go, there's the eyebrow, okay? The next level is very simple, it's the same as the bottom. Basically the bottom two and the top two are very similar. So we're gonna put those on top, just like that. Then we're gonna add a couple green pieces. Now I like to add a little unsymmetricalness to this top. So we're gonna add in the, so we are gonna add in this flower piece, which makes it look like the stem has some leaves on it. That's okay. And then we're gonna add a little slope to it to give it a little more not symmetricalness to it. So we're gonna put the little slope piece there and the stem up there, right in the middle. Now you can stagger that, you can move it around. If you don't have these pieces, just go with any old green piece, just like that. And it looks very good, just the same. But in our case, that's the best that I think we can do. So there you go. There is a Lego jack-o'-lantern built very simply with simple components. And it gives a really cool effect of a three-dimensional Lego jack-o'-lantern. It's not just a flat pixel art. It actually has a little bit of depth to it. If you want to see more depth to a pumpkin, go see my tutorial on how to build a Halloween pumpkin. It's not carved like a jack-o'-lantern, but it has that overall roundness that you would be looking for in an overall pumpkin, an overall 3D pumpkin. So go look at that link. We'll leave a, we'll leave a link up here to, for you to go find that as well. I'd love to see your builds of this particular Lego jack-o'-lantern. Go post it on Facebook, our Instagram, or our Twitter, and we would love to see your versions of this build. But if you're under a certain age, make sure that you have your parents post it or ask them if you could post it. So there you go. That is the three-dimensional Lego jack-o'-lantern that you can build out of simple components, out of a classic kit. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of this Halloween-themed week of Legos, subscribe down below. It will really help us grow our channel. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.